Well, finally, after several weeks of some really difficult texts, ones about moody kings and absurd dress codes, scriptures about infighting in the church and messy relationships, scriptures about taxes and broken tables, we finally get to one that is so much more familiar and much more comforting. I mean, it's kind of like having to play on the road against the Patriots, the Chiefs, and the Saints, only to wake up and see a home game against the Lions on your schedule. It's the Beatitudes, the blessings. Eight times Jesus speaks a blessing over us. You are blessed, 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 blessed. And man, isn't that a welcome word today? I don't know about you, but I'm in need of a blessing right now. So I, I sat down with my Bible and excited to really dig into these blessings. And guess what? I was surprised. I, I caught off guard actually a little bit. Because on a closer read of this text today, these were actually kind of strange blessings, weren't they? Blessed are you when you're poor in spirit? When you're at the end of your rope? When you feel empty and lost? Blessed? Seriously? Blessed are you when you mourn? When you still feel the loss? When you still miss your people terribly? Blessed? Really? Blessed are you when you're literally sick to your stomach about the injustice of the world? Blessed are you when you have to forgive the people who messed you over? Blessed are you when you feel invisible and forgotten and powerless? And that last one, did you catch that last one? Blessed are you when you're persecuted? When you're harassed? And called names? Blessed when people jump all over your Facebook for taking a stand on what you think is right? Blessed are you when folks malign or misunderstand you? Seriously, Jesus? I thought we got the lions this week. These are strange blessings. I mean, they're not typically what we think of when we think of blessing. In fact, I went and checked old good Merriam-Webster dictionary. Do you remember the Merriam-Webster dictionary? I still actually have one of those. I was given that uh, as a graduation present from high school to take to college with me. I, I got out the old Merriam-Webster and I looked to see if my gut about this idea of blessing was, was off base. And here's what I discovered. The old Merriam-Webster defines blessing as something that leads to happiness. Well, I can wrap my head around that. I'm a good middle-class American, so I often measure my blessing by happiness, by, by things, by possessions, by wealth, by power, by influence, by happiness. We feel blessed when things are working out in our favor. We feel blessed when the surgery goes well, or the promotion comes through, or the job search is fruitful. We feel blessed when the market is up, and when morale is up, and when our spirits are up. So what are we supposed to do with this list of strange blessings from Jesus today. And to complicate it, even just a little more, he gave us this list of strange blessings on this Sunday. 
the Sunday where we remember those friends and those loved ones who have died in the last year, this Sunday, when even if they've died years ago, we still feel their presence so heavy upon us. I have to ask you, Jesus, where, where is the blessing in this? And not just to have to do it on this Sunday, but to have it do it on this Sunday in this year. The loss and death just seem to be around us. Over a quarter of a million of our country men and women have died as a result of the COVID pandemic and over 1.2 million around the world. And you want me to talk about blessing today. Can I just get the weird scripture about taxes again? That might be a little easier. So what do we do with the strange blessings? Well, one, we can say Jesus didn't know what he was talking about. Or two, maybe we can look below the surface again and see if there's a deeper meaning to what this blessing is that Jesus is pointing us towards. And if the second option is right, well then today's probably the perfect day and probably the most perfect year for a different meaning to the word blessing. The second one, blessed are you when you mourn. Blessed are you when you feel like you've lost that which is most dear. Blessed are you when you miss them and you can't shake their memory. Blessed are you when the very mention of their name still brings tears to your eyes. I have to tell you, one of the most sacred moments of being your pastor is sitting with you in the days after one of your loved ones has passed. In these moments, when the loss is fresh and the emotions are just so close to the surface, the blessing that Jesus talks about starts to open up like a flower. Blessed are you when you mourn. And so I sit there. And sometimes I just sit there while story after stories of their loved ones are told and the tears mingle with laughter and by the time we are done, <laughs> everybody leaves feeling blessed. Blessed are you when you mourn for that's how you find comfort. I tasted that strange blessing Jesus was talking about this week. My Uncle Bob died. And so Sunday I called my dad. And we talked for a long time about my Uncle Bob. And we shared stories and memories of this, of this simple man who worked his whole life as a paper mill laborer, who won no awards, who received no accolades, and meant the world to us. We told stories about camping trips and the fish they caught and the fish they almost caught and the fish they wished they caught and the fish they said they caught and never brought back to camp. We told the stories about the cards they played and how the one time in the middle of the most heated game of spoons ever, they literally broke the dining room table into two. And we laughed, and we laughed, and we laughed, and we laughed, and we were comforted, and we were blessed. It is easy to think that the best thing to do in the face of death is to forget, to not talk about it, to move on, and yet here comes Jesus and says the real blessing is not actually to move on, but to pause, to recall, and to remember. The blessing is in the morning, it is in the sharing of our grief. Grief 
after all, is a part of love. Not to grieve, not to mourn, is to slam the door on the same place in which love itself met us in the first place. To not grieve, to not mourn, is to shortchange the blessing of having been loved by our beloveds. So let's follow Jesus' lead this morning. Let's take a moment to claim that blessing. Let's take a moment to remember some of the names of those we've read aloud today. The first of those we lost last year was Anne Brace. Anne was pretty new to our community. She was courageous and fierce and full of love and hope. She willed herself to live weeks past her prognosis, years past her prognosis. By the grace of God, she never let the tragedy of her young death rob her of our joy. And you blessed us. Vel Loman, feisty and funny, tough and tender, Caring and strong. Vel found the redemptive love in Christ and of Christ in her in her husband Mark and in her kids Jay and Jenny and in the service of her church. Vel, you blessed us. On Christmas Eve, we, we lost two of the kindest men our, of our congregation, Jack Hughes and Ken Burton became a part of the candles of that silent night. Jack, he was the patriarch of St. John's United Methodist Church. He was the consummate churchman, serving in almost every capacity possible to keep that church vibrant and alive, adored by his kids and his grandkids, a true friend to his pastors. Jack, you blessed us. And my good old buddy, Kenny Burton, from Kentucky, he was, he was so smitten by his love of Joyce that you would have thought the two of them were teenagers. Theirs was the very first wedding we celebrated in the new sanctuary. They stood here and said, for better, for worse, in sickness and in health, for richer or for poorer, I am yours until death do us part. Ken, you blessed us. Dick Bryan, the great jokester of the church, always doing a little shuffle soft shoe with his cane. And I'll always remember the moment where I sat with Dick and Judy in Dick's room at the care facility and the three of us sang for what felt like an hour. We sang together the songs of the faith. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. And suddenly all the nurses and orderlies kept sticking their head in while the three Methodists sang the blessings of that room. Dick, you blessed us. Lorraine Dorsey, I never had the privilege of meeting you, but I know your husband, John. And John lights up like a Christmas tree when he talks about you. You introduce John, this doctor, this man of science, to a balanced life of faith. A gift for which he and now we are eternally grateful Lorraine, you, you blessed us. And Janet Court, I can't imagine coming here without seeing Janet Court. Always here, always with a smile, always kind and caring, and you loved her. And she loved you in return. Janet, you blessed us. 
Zenobia Courtney, the greatest name of all. Zenobia Courtney, the mother of eight, grandmother of 19, great-grandmother of 17. She was a music educator and traveled the world to bring the music and culture she encountered back to her students. Her appearance in worship over these last years was always a moment to celebrate. Zenobia, you blessed us. Mac Spears. Mac captured the whole heart of this congregation, and he reminded us that the ties of Christian community transcend race and background and economics. While special to us all, it was the Orletskis who adopted him, and they will forever be touched by his kind and gentle spirit. Mac, you blessed us. Suzanne Hughes, what a year it has been for you, the Hughes family. Both of your parents listed among the saints. Suzanne, Miss Sunshine, caring mother, adored grandmother, lifelong friend. She poured her love into everyone and everything she could. Suzanne, you blessed us. And here in the last month, two, two names that have come to symbolize so much of the recent history of our congregation. Diane Wardock, in many ways, one of the matriarchs here. Generations of young people experienced the love of Christ through her commitment to Christian education. Diane loved and laughed and cared for us all. She left the fingerprints of Jesus on everything she touched. Diane, you blessed us. And Betty, Betty Locke, whose life we will actually celebrate here this coming Saturday. Betty was a leader beyond the walls of our church. She worked for senators and judges, and she was funny and caring and determined and tough. And she was a loyal friend. And Betty, you blessed us. And we stood this year with some of our church friends like Amy and Rick Liebline and Al Beecham and Brian and Estrella Nader and Chris and Nan Orletsky and Jenny and Vince Noter Antonio as all of you cared for your parent whose light now shines eternally among us. You see, that's why we have to set this day aside. Because we have to pause. And we have to remember. We have to name the names. We have to light the lights. Because there's something about standing in the light of the saints. You can't help but feel blessed. So to not pause, to not mourn, to not grieve, to not risk the tears, is to not risk getting the blessing. And Jesus made that clear to us today, that there is nothing more in the world he wants than for us to have his blessing. So I want us to close our time today by asking you to do something with me. All of us have special ones who are no longer with us, who loved us into being. So I want you to invite me, to invite you along with me to take the next 30 seconds to just think about the people who helped you become who you are. Those who cared about you and wanted what was best 
in life for you. Join me in these 30 seconds and bask in the blessing of your saints. Whoever you've been thinking about, just think how pleased they must be to know the difference you feel they've made. They are the light of God that shines in you now. And that's the miracle of this day. That when we take the time to mourn and to grieve and remember, uh, there is more light in the world today. May you be blessed. And may you realize that their blessing is now in you. Let us pray. Lord, we give you <laughs> thanks for inviting us to receive your blessing, a blessing that is different than the way we want to be blessed by the world. Today it is in taking account of what we have lost and those we have lost that we realize all we have been given throughout our lives. We bask in the light of the saints today, and we are blessed. Thank you, Jesus, for loving us. Amen.